this morning. I want you to begin to speak to God. That He will minister to you this morning. That you will not live here the same way you came. That the Lord will give you His word. The word that will bring about a transformation and restoration in your life, in your business, in your career. This is our month of restoration. I want you to speak to God. The scripture says the power of life and death is in your thumb. I want you to open your mouth and declare. Declare his word. I want you to speak this morning that as you have come into his presence, you will not live the same way you came. That as you have come, he will speak his word, give you a word that will transform your life, that will transform your marriage, that will transform your career, that will open you up to opportunities, that will launch you into limelight, that the Lord will give you that word this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's have our seats. We're going to be brief this morning. And I pray that within the short time that we have, the Lord will give you a word. A word that will bring about a turnaround in your life in your situation, in your career. A, a word that will put a fresh fire, a desire in you. A word that will cause you to go above your limitation. The word that will propel you to life. That will cause everything, every deposit of God in you to come alive. That will cause everything that God has deposited in you, lying dormant, to begin to find expression in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout a better amen. amen. We all know that this is our month of restoration. And uh, I was asking God, what do you want me to talk about? And I was shocked uh, when he said, uh, you know, I got this topic, a road to sonship. I, I was wondering, road to sonship, how does this translate to restoration? And, uh, and I found out, the Lord began to tell me that it's not really about, uh, you know, prayer, Lord, rest, you know, restore to me this, restore to me that, restore, you know. It's, like it's about of your position, where you are standing that determine what happens to your life. That makes a difference. That the focus is about your position. Where are you? Are you still in God? Are you standing with God or you have deviated? He said, that is the issue. That should be the focus. And he gave me this word, he said, when a man's way pleases the Lord, he makes his enemy to be at peace with him. God told me that what we focus on today in the church is about the enemy. Not about where you are standing. Not about your position. The focus should be on pleasing God. When a man's way pleases the Lord, it will make even his enemy to be at peace with him. So your energy... Your agitation, your, you know, your passion, everything should be to please God. You should invest your time, your energy in pleasing God. And you will see God begin to open you up. Begin to release your divine, that's your innate ability. You are not ordinary. You are not a physical being. You are a spiritual being living in a physical body for you to interact on this realm. And for your supernatural life to find expression here, you must stand with God. 
is the one that will release, cause everything, your supernatural nature to be released, to bear rule upon this realm. And Jesus Christ is our example. Jesus was a man, complete man, and he was completely God. The same way you are made, you are created, you are a spirit being. And that is why the scripture admonish us that we should not live in the flesh. And as long as you continue to live in the flesh, you are subjected to the limitations of this realm. He said, whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. As long as you are, you know, you are living in your flesh, you cannot fulfill your divine assignment. Because everything on this realm is subjected to the principles of this realm. And in order for you to live above the limitation of this realm, you need to release your divine ability. You need to begin to live the life of Christ. The world has called us to be the best version of yourself. And that is anti the word of God. God has not called you to be the best version of yourself. In fact, God has called you to deny yourself. Because yourself, if you are still living in yourself, then you are living under the load and the yoke and the limitation of this physical realm. And for you to live above, it's a day that are of above do the things that are above. So restoration is about where you are standing. All of us, we knew when we gave our life to Jesus, how the fire, you know, was burning in you. Is it the same? Your first love, do you love God the same way, you know, when you came to Christ? Is it still the same? The restoration is finding your way back. Where is he that I've deviated? What is he that I was doing then that I'm not doing now? That caused the enemy to penetrate? He said, when men slept, the enemy came and so tears. And one thing that the Holy Spirit has been able to help him, especially in this, you know, in this system, you know, in this ungodly system, that does not give way, give room. They don't have God in their agenda, you know, and don't expect them to put God in their agenda. No. The system of this world and the place where we find ourselves, the Lord has, you know, helped me, op op you know, open me up to the, you know, to those things that are insignificant. You don't need that one hour, two hours to spend at a time with God if you don't have it but consistency if it's five minutes if it's ten minutes yeah there ten minutes here yeah, five minutes there you are consistently consistent that is what makes the difference and the enemy too they attack the cops they understand the power of that littleness of that things that you see is significant and that is how the enemy have been able to penetrate it. You know, little by little, you deviate. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But by the time you realize you are far gone from him. You are far from him. And then it becomes a struggle to find your way back. It becomes a struggle to find your way back. And this thing is not a magic. It's not a magic. You know, God was telling me, you know, praying, you know, there was, we, we did a, a retreat, a prayer retreat, the prayer group, and we're talking about praying about, uh, you know, protection. And God made me to hope, you know, there's a scripture that said, he that dwelleth 
in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. The point is he that dwelleth. Not he that goes, that just come, you know. One time, you know, just come when he feels like. Dwelling in the presence of God is a lifestyle. You are dwelling in the presence of God. He said, he that dwelleth in the presence of God shall abide. No wonder Moses said, if your presence will not go with us, we will not go. And that is why, you know, the scripture can call, was it Joseph, you know, a successful man, when he was naked, he was sold as a slave. He was, you know, everything that he knew was taken away from him, and the scriptures call him a successful man. Why? Because the presence of God is with him. God was with him. So irrespective of where you are, what is happening around you, what makes it different is the presence of God. And it's not always easy. You need to deny yourself. You deny yourself. If you want your true nature you know, to find expression, your divine nature to find expression, you deny yourself like Jesus did. He said, not my will, but your will be done. When you get to this position, that is when God begins to release unto you that which belongs to you, your inheritance. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, you know, I've been talking with her, you know, say, you know, he's not using the scripture. <laughs> I don't think Jesus Christ was using the scripture. Because he was scripture himself when he was there. He won't say, let us open to this before he talks. You know, Jesus was, I don't think he was doing that. He said he himself was the word. And we must get to that position. That is the, that is the end view of God. He said he desired to bring many sons unto glory. And if you want to come to glory, you need to walk with him. And to walk with him, you can't, no excess luggage, no excess baggage. There are things you let go. You know, yourself, you know, you want to do things where you want to do things. You know, you need to grow you are no longer a babe. In Isaiah 9, 6, it said a child is born, but who is given? A son is given. It said government shall be upon his shoulder. Government shall not be upon the shoulder of a child. As long as you still remain a child, you cannot fulfill your divine mandate. God cannot release unto you. God cannot launch you out into what he wants. He doesn't want you to mess it, you know, to bring shame to him. He said, a son is given. Government. What kind of government? Is it the government of this world? No. There is a higher government that bear rule upon this realm. This realm is a mirage. The real thing is the realm where, where we operate from. The realm that determines what goes on on this realm. That is the real realm. And before you can be a rule in that realm, because before you can become a commander in that realm, you need to pass from childhood to sonship. And being a son, you need to give up yourself. Coming to sonship is a road, a road to death. Death. And it's a lonely road. It's a lonely road. You walk it alone. He said, government shall be upon his shoulder. Government. What is government? In the realm of the spirit, there are government. There are two kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. And that is why the scripture says, the scepter of your kingdom is the scepter of righteousness. What is scepter? Authority. Symbol of authority. And it's that righteousness that Jesus has bestowed upon you. You cannot stand and face Satan by your own righteousness. We stand and declare the mandate of God by the righteousness. We stand in this office by the righteousness of Jesus, which is the gift. And that is why, you know, the scepter, the symbol of our authority in the realm of the spirit. And that is why the scripture says, Isaiah was a man of like passion like you. 
He eats the way you eat. He sleeps. And yet he was able to command the heaven to cease. Rain stop for three years. A man. That means that if we come to sonship, we can't determine what apple in the seat of government of this nation. But you won't be able to do that. Excuse me. Until your own obedience is fulfilled. The scripture says you will be able to judge every disobedience when your own obedience is fulfilled. And we must come to that. In Matthew 26, 39, we see when Jesus said, you know, when he saw what he was to go through, the, the Jesus, you know, God, he was God. But he brought himself down. He submitted himself to the will of the Father. You know, he stripped himself of the glory the scripture says he did not see it as robbery, you know, to be equal with God. You must pass through those processes whereby God can entrust you with power. He can entrust you with glory. Jesus learned obedience through what he suffered and God glorified him. God told me, it is your own my son, focus on your side. The glorification belongs to me. He said, I will make your enemy to be at peace with you. What should be your focus? Pleasing me. In everything you do, your energy, your passion, everything should be to please God. Is there anything I'm not doing right? David says, search me, O oh God, and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. That is somebody who wants to please God. And Jesus Christ obeyed even until, until death, unto death on the cross of Calvary. Obeying the Father's will We cost you. We cost you. It's not cheap. Coming to sonship. It's not butter and bread. And that is why the scripture says the road that leads to life, you know, he said, it's very difficult. I love Jesus. He don't, he's, not, he's not diplomatic like you and I. He's a marketer. And I've never seen such a marketer, you know, before <laughs> that will tell you, a marketer will tell you what is good. You know, they will try to, even when they know that there's something, you know, they won't tell you the other aspect. They will tell you what is good so that you can buy the product. Jesus Christ said, come, oh boy, if you want to follow me, think. The road is not easy. I will say it as it is. He said, few are those who find it because he knows that what he has to offer. Uh-uh. The real deal. is the real deal. He knows what he has to offer is the real thing. He said, it is not easy. I'm not here to joke. So if you want to follow me, you will deny. You deny the word. Carry your cross on a daily basis. And the restoration that we need at this hour is finding our way back to God. God has never moved. He's still where he is. And that is why I said, he said, you know, my hand is not too shortened or my hair is too heavy to hear your prayer. He said, but something has separated you. God did not move. He's, he has always been where he is. He said, but something has separated you from me. Your sin has separated you from me. And that is what happened in the Garden of Eden. And that is why Jesus came to restore us back to relationship with God. So all we need to do is to find your way back to him. He said, it is narrow. Few are those that find it. Are you among the few? Do you want all that God has? Or do you want to live your life on the average? The way you are living. You know, cat race. Walking to pay your bills. You know, 
from morning to night. And the way, you know, I love the world, the system of the world. They design it very well for you. You know, if you want to run very well, they design it. You will run, they will run you, run you, run you until you are old and you become useless. And they will be giving you pension. And sometimes you might lose your health, you know, running after those things. He said, is the, was it, is the gift of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. The system doesn't send God. You know, they don't send God and I'm not surprised about that. It is normal because God said, the, my government is not of this world. Yes. And that, when the disciples were telling Jesus, hey, when are you going to restore back the, you know, the kingdom of Israel to us? He said, sorry, you know, that's not what I've come to do. But you can live here and live a supernatural life on this realm. And everything, limitation here, you will live above them. Because you are above. You are above. You are above. God has not called you to live a mediocre life. To run from pillar to post, walking 24 hours. I was sharing with somebody. I said, God knows that this kind of system we exist. But yet, he designed the world. He gave us 24 hours. <laughs> and that is why when he's getting, you know, you know, you know, he knows these people. I know they are stubborn. Okay. You know, I don't see a reason why, you know, the scripture said that there is no night in heaven. You know, but God said, if I allow light not to be here, these people will walk themselves to death. So I need to let darkness come so that they can sleep. He knows they will walk themselves to death. So let me, you know, but up, hold on. Someone can walk around the clock. I know someone that walked 18 hours. Now tell me, how will that person have time for God? You can't. And I don't blame you. You are tired. Even people that doesn't walk 18 hours are tired. Sometimes I feel dry too. I want to pray. I can't pray. It is normal. In this world, this flesh is a limitation. There is life that flows in me. He wants to, he's yelling, you know, waiting. God, when are you going to release me out of this? This is a limitation. This is a cage for me. But we can live the life of Christ because Jesus showed us how to do that. He lived a supernatural, a divine life here on this planet earth. And that is why when you want to pray, say, God, I thank you because I know you always hear me. I've never seen Jesus praying and knocking his head on the wall before, you know, things works for him. Because he focused on his own path, submitting to the will of the Father. And the Father always have his back. He will not allow him to be put to shame. Because he gave, and at the end of the day, the scriptures that God glorified him. The throne belonged to him, but yet, he showed us the way to the throne. He showed us how to get to the throne, how to live above. And God, even the scripture made us wonder, it is the will of God to, you know, to bring many sons to glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want us to be on our feet because of our time. The scripture says the, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. I want us to be on our feet. You've heard the word of God this morning. I believe God has spoken to you. You know, the word, everything I've said might not be for you. Just one thing. You know, I want you to pray that God help me, strengthen me, grant me the strength to find my way back to you. To find my way back to the place of strength, to the place of power. You know, like when I first gave my life to you, Father, help me. I want you to open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. That the Lord will help you, the Lord will strengthen you. He said, the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but the Lord that showed mercy. I want you to open your mouth and pray that Lord help me, strengthen me to find my way back to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And open my eyes to see where I have gone wrong, 
where things are out of place in my life so that I can bring order, I can put things back in order in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, help us, strengthen us, expound the word, your word in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Cause the life that is embedded in your word, cause it to find expression, cause it to affect our lives, to gain entrance and, and bring transformation in every areas of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that the spirit of life, oh Lord, that it will be released upon us. The spirit of an endless life will be released upon us to live above the situation of life. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise. For in Jesus' name we pray. Let's put our hands together for Jesus.